In this training video, we'll take a look at the rear panel connections and control buttons on the 2250 and 2270 sound level meter. If we open the rear panel on the meter, we'll notice that there are a number of connectors. The first is the external power connector at the far right. When external power is connected and the battery is charging, the light below the connector will be red. The light will turn green when the battery is fully charged. The meter can be powered with the included AC adapter or an 8 to 24 volt DC power supply. The 2270 has two input connections on the rear panel. These can be used for connecting a microphone or an accelerometer if we do not want to use the top socket on the meter. The rear inputs can provide CCLD power for transducers, so an external power supply isn't required. The 2250 only has one of these inputs. If we'd like to use an external trigger or tachometer with the meter, we can connect it via the trigger input. The trigger input can also provide CCLD power to our tachometer, so we don't have to have an extra power supply for that either. The next connector is the output connector. It can be used with the internal generator on the meter as an output of the microphone or accelerometer signal or as a DC voltage that is proportional to the input level. The earphone connector will allow us to hook up a pair of earphones so that we can listen to our input signal while we are making a measurement, as well as listen to voice commentaries and recordings from stored measurements on the meter. For connecting the meter to other devices, there are two USB connectors. These can be used for connecting the meter to your computer to download data to the measurement partner suite software, or for other devices, such as a GPS unit or weather station. A USB memory stick may also be connected for storing measurements. The Ethernet port can be used to connect the meter to your computer as well. It can also be used to access the meter remotely via network connection such as a wireless or 3 or 4G modem. Through the connected network, we can control the meter as though we had it in our hand. On newer fourth generation meters, there are two SD card slots that can be used for storing measurements and recording signals. We can use a wireless SD card in one of the slots to make the meter wireless. Older generations of hardware have one SD card slot and one CF card slot. The last item on the rear panel is the reset button. The reset button can be used if you have a software or hardware problem with the meter. Next, let's take a look at the control buttons on the front of the meter. The first button is the power button located at the bottom front of the meter. Press and hold the power button to turn the meter on or off. Momentarily pushing the button will put the meter into standby mode. The rest of the control buttons are at the top of the screen. In this video, I'm connected to my meter through my computer and the top control buttons appear in the window on the left. The most commonly used button is the start stop button at the middle bottom section of the control panel. It is flashing yellow slowly, which lets us know that it's ready to take a measurement. We can hit the button to start a measurement and it will turn green. When we hit the button again, the measurement will stop. When we stop the measurement, it will flash yellow quickly to indicate that a measurement has been taken, but hasn't yet been saved. When we press the save button, we can notice that the button returns to a slow flashing yellow to indicate that the measurement has been saved. If we start and stop a measurement, but we do not want to save the measurement, we can use the reset button on the lower left. When we press the button, a message window will pop up to let us know that the current measurement will be reset instead of being saved. We can click OK to proceed and reset the measurement or cancel it to not reset the measurement. The measurement name is displayed at the top of the meter. In this example, the measurement name is Project 004. It has an asterisk next to it, 
because it hasn't yet been saved. If we start a measurement and stop it and hit the save button at the lower right, notice that the asterisk goes away because the measurement has now been saved to the meter. When we make measurements, it's a good idea to take notes about what the measurement is. The button at the top right is the audio commentary button and can make note taking very easy. When we hold down the button, we can make an audio note that is saved with the measurement. The audio comments are useful for easily identifying the measurement in the future. Notice that when I hold down the commentary button, we see the button icon on the display screen. When I release the button, the commentary icon goes away. The direction buttons allow us to move our selection on the meter screen. For example, if we have the cursor selected, we can move the cursor with the left and right buttons. Using the up and down arrows, we can change our selection. If I hit the check mark button, it will confirm the selection, and we can open the selected menu. When I hit the confirm button, it will confirm the new selection and apply it. The button at the top left is the manual event button. The manual event button can allow you to control signal recording or with the logging applications, insert an event marker. It can also be used to take a picture with the 2270. The button below it is the back erase button. This allows you to erase the last five seconds of measurement data or to insert an exclude marker in the logging applications. That's a quick introduction to the connections and control buttons on the meter. In the next training video, we'll take a look at setting up measurements and preferences on the meter.